In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a hotspot and when is the best time to use them. So I was asked uh, to actually do this video. I had previously not or decided not to do hotspot question slides. But, uh, you know, it was a question that one of the viewers asked for and I thought, you know, why not? I'll cover this off and, you know, it's certainly it's a good type of interaction for uh, first-time users or, or beginners with uh, Adobe Captivate 9. Um, hotspots have been around for a while. I don't generally use them and maybe by the end of the video you'll see why. Um, in this case I've created an example of where I probably wouldn't use a hotspot, but I still set it up as one just so you can see for yourself. Uh, on this particular version of a hotspot slide, um, you know, and I should just quickly review the items that you're going to see on the quiz panel. Uh, there is one or two items that are also on the properties panel, but I'll show you those as we go through them. So in this case here, this is pretty much a default, um, this is pretty much a default hotspot. So I've chosen a, a graded hotspot. So this would be a final quiz question. In this case, there's one answer, and I can't see it because I've, I've hidden the hotspot, which is something I would recommend in this instance. Uh, in this particular question, we're asking the users to indicate on the map where the province of Ontario is, and it's right here. But you see, the problem with hotspots is that they are square boxes, and uh, unlike smart shapes, you can't reshape them. Uh, to, you know, to be more contoured to what it is that you're trying to get people to click on. So I kind of have to cover all of the area of Ontario, but unfortunately, as you can see, it spills into about 30% of the province of Quebec and maybe about 20% of the province of Saskatchewan. Um, is that right? No, that's Saskatchewan. This is Manitoba. Sorry. Uh, spills into Manitoba. I don't even know my own country. Shame on me. Um, so again, this is probably a bad example of where you would want to use a hotspot. Personally, what I would probably do is I would create a series of smart shapes and then work with those smart shapes so that they become buttons that are shaped like the actual provinces. And that way I can be sure and even maybe use a, a a multi-state object to indicate to users that they have selected a particular province from all the others. But in this case here, this would work. It would be functional, but there would be a margin of error that's outside of the actual province that we're asking users to click on. So here are the, um, here are the parameters that are within the quiz panel. You can choose the number of answers. You can add additional hotspots. Um, you can choose the number of points. And you can also choose a penalty if they select incorrectly. There is a default animation that's built into Adobe Captivate, but if you would like to select a Shockwave Flash file that you've created or perhaps an animated GIF or GIF, depending on your pronunciation of that, um, you could select those from here. You can limit users to clicks only within a hotspot. So in this case, I wouldn't want to do that because I want them to choose, um, you know, if they're unsure, I don't want them to see that the right answer is only within this box. Of course, with most quiz questions, you have the option to add uh, feedback captions. Here's the correct feedback, the incomplete, and obviously um, down here you actually have the failure message that's built into the actions section. Uh, we have, uh, I've turned on the clear, back, and skip buttons, but by default they don't actually appear. And you can choose what the, the default action is. The default in this case would normally be continue. I almost always change my questions to go to next slide, um, simply because I don't want users to sit there unnecessarily waiting to go to the next slide. And of course, like most quiz questions, you can choose the number of attempts. So if you'd like to give them one try only, as I've done here, or you can also say, well, give them a second shot or a third shot, in which case you could choose different failure messages uh, or just simply a retry message. So if I choose, let's say I want to give them three tries, 
what that allows me to do is to select a retry message. So that's going to show them this try again option. Now let's resize that so it's out of the way. Or alternatively, you could just simply give them three different incorrect messages, one that appears one after the other, and then you can adjust the text within each of them accordingly. Um, your last attempt would be probably a go to next slide on a final quiz because they're simply going to continue with the rest of the quiz and be marked incorrect on this. However, if you're doing this as a knowledge check, which is certainly a possibility, you could uh, actually go to some previous slide. You could jump to a, a previous slide and, and basically have that act as a form of remediation. I often do that with my course. I'll teach or instruct a little bit of knowledge or skill, and then I'll test them on it by using something like a, qu a question slide or a knowledge check slide. And if you know, I'll give them a chance to get it correct, and if they've, they've not been successful, I will return them back to that earlier slide where they learned the material in the first place so that they have an opportunity to learn it correctly. And in the case of final quiz questions, you'll have the opportunity to report uh, that information as part of the actual quiz. So as I indicated, this is really not a great example of hotspots, but it's pretty default. You're going to have that one location, and normally it's going to have a little blue outline around it to indicate um, you know, that, that it is a hotspot. I think a more practical example of a hotspot would be to do something like this one here. Uh, perhaps we have a, a piece of machinery that uh, has a series of buttons on it that are color-coded. And uh, for this example, uh, as you can see, I've, I've set it up using the Properties panel to indicate which one is the correct answer and also to show the hand cursor over the hit area. So in this case, I'm keeping the, you know, I could actually, I don't think it's actually necessary in this case but I could highlight all of these, get rid of the stroke so all they see is the button. It's, um, it's completely transparent. And you can see that I've indicated that this one is the correct answer and that's done through the properties panel. So I've checked off correct answer, but all of them have show hand cursor over hit area. And in the case of the actual quiz panel, what I've done is I've, as you can see here, I've indicated that there are six possible answers. Uh, obviously, five of them are, are incorrect. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the default animation, but again, you could you could replace that. And I'm checking off only allow clicks on hotspots, and that way, you know, they'll see clearly if they try to click over here. Um, you know, I'm I'm going to expect them to at least get it within the range of buttons that are available. Um, and then, of course, you could do the same types of things like go to next slide for success. Uh, you could allow them, say, two attempts and maybe show uh, a retry caption just so that they have an opportunity to, uh, to succeed. And then on the last attempt, we could say go to next slide. Or, like I said, in the case of a knowledge check, jump back to a previous slide where they would have learned this material in the first place. So let's just do a preview of this project and again you'll see very clearly I will take this outline out but I'll also demonstrate why it doesn't work so great. So let's just do a preview of this project. We'll do it as um, as HTML5 in browser. So here's our first slide where we have this single hotspot, but there's no restriction to where the user can click. So they can click over here, over here, over here, wherever they wish. If they hit submit, that's going to be counted as an incorrect answer, even though that one of their clicks was actually within Ontario. Um, let's restart that one. And just take a, another look at it where, where it can be problematic. As I indicated, because I can only create these square hot boxes or hot spots, if I click there, even though this is actually part of the province of Quebec, 
this is going to be marked correct because it's within that square box that I have and it's within that margin of error. And so this is really not a great example of where or when you would use a hotspot. But here's a better choice. So again, you know, when I when I move over the various objects, really this just becomes a multiple choice question, uh, just a very graphical multiple choice question. So I can't click over here. That option has been taken away. But I could click on the wrong button and submit that. It says try again. So you know, in this case here, you can click on an item to unselect it and then click on the correct answer. Uh, alternatively, you could also put a clear button on this particular slide and that would help users to clear off their previous answers. So let's submit that and I get the correct answer. And there you go. So there's a, a good example of when not to use a hotspot and probably a better example of when you could use a hotspot. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.